I've wondered what it's like to slush through the mangroves, but the alligators have always kept my feet ashore. Today, though, I was determined to slip in, bathe in the shallow water, and gaze through the tangled limbs meandered into clusters so dense the sky disappears. That's when I abandoned the kayak, along with the ringing phone. Do it again. Maybe later, I thought. Or maybe not. Onto my knees, I lowered myself and hobbled into the mangrove stand, hoping the late night fall cool had driven the gators to higher ground and more sunlight, or better yet, further south to warmer weather. I'd read that mothers sometimes linger in burrows until their young are ready to swim away, so I was cautious at first. I maneuvered through to the other side of the mangroves and a few feet deeper into the water. The sound of the ringing phone was constant but fading. Once I was in enough, I stretched myself out on my back, spread my arms like a snow angel, and floated. I watched the mullet fly and dive back in, and a flock of white ebris digging for fiddler crab in the mud unearthed by the receding tide. The sky became more interesting and the idea of floating beneath it more appealing as the canal spilled out into the open water. Miss Savannah would have called this my surrender, like the first time she walked out her front door and away from her three bickering children. She said she stopped at a payphone and left a message for Barnaby at the base to let him know he'd need to get straight home after work because the next-door neighbor was watching his ungrateful children. He had until six o'clock.